Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So um, I've had a lot of time recently um, free. I've, I've kind of nearly finished my extension and stuff on the house. So I've been doing a few jobs on the daily. Um, my missus has been using the Range Rover an awful lot recently. And um, I've got some new uh, front discs and pads to fit it. Um, Brembo discs with uh, Ferrodo pads on board. Because uh, they didn't have Brembo pads in, in on stock. At the, you know, from your own car park where I bought them so uh, I'm going to get on with fitting them today um, if you're new to the channel uh, about three weeks ago uh, I fitted rear discs and pads and I'll put a link on this page um, to, to, to that video if you want to uh, watch that video that was quite quite quite, quite a good video um, I'll just I'll just do a video doing one the one side because I don't need the video doing the other side do I because it's just It'll be so sort of like it's exactly the same, self-explanatory. So uh, I usually crack the car off, uh, crack the nuts off uh, with my crack bar, so I don't damage the wheels, and never use my whizzy gun. So uh, let's get on with it. Eh? So now I've cracked the wheel nuts off, jacked the car up. Uh, I just pulled the wheel nuts off by hand now. If you're new to the channel, um, this is a 2010 uh, Range Rover L322 4.4 uh, TDV8. So the 4.4 TDV8 comes with uh, Brembo front front calipers and front discs. So these are six pop Brembos, massive caliper, like massive disc to be fair as well. Probably needs it, doesn't it? These are like a uh, 2,800 kilograms, these trucks. Don't put this wheel safe. So we'll start by uh, stripping the brake pipe down. There's a little bolt here. Thirteen one socket. Undo the bolts. Well, I undo the bolts a little bit, and then I just put it back in. And it's happening. So I'll be able to explain to you in a minute what it is, what it's like. Then I get me punch. Tap out. all the rust on it so with the kit that I bought I get these new bolts and these new pins to hold the, hold the pads in so I took them off I keep the sprays anyway then we've got um, two pins which hold hold, hold hold the spring in which holds the caliper it holds the, the pads together you just knock these out and push be careful because because there is some energy with these. When you knock them out, the spring has got a little bit of, little bit of, little bit of uh, energy to it. So it could come flying out. Oop, see. So take them out, take the spring off, one pin, 
two pins knocked out. They're the old ones, got brand new ones to fit because they come with the kit. Then we're going to pull the pads out. So get a little pry bar. And a pry against the pistons and the old pad because we're not going to use the, use the old pad, are we? Now, because I'm doing the passenger side first, it's got a little wear sensor on it. Uh, the kit I bought uh, hasn't come with new wear sensors, so I've got to, I'll be dead careful and just flick this one out of the pads and put it into the new pads. Set of pads. Simply just flicks out carefully. There's actually quite a bit of meat left on them pads. Oh. Sound. Still in all in good condition. Let's do the same to this pad. What I tend to do is get the pry bar between between the pad and the disc because I'm replacing the disc and the pad. So it doesn't really matter if I mark them a little bit. I'll throw that pad back in the front. So we can get the pads back if possible. Okay. So now I'm gonna undo there's two bolts to hold this caliper on, and I'll undo them in a second. I'm just going to undo this uh, cap head first. And it's a uh, six mil Allen key, which holds the disc in place. I'm undoing this only because if I have to get my impact, I've got like an impact um, driver. Um, it's better having the caliper bolted on than hanging or resting on an axle stand, which I'll show you. Oh, yeah, we've got it anyway. Quite, quite, quite loose. So we'll undo that. The little six mil, little six mil special cap head. So I'll put that safe on my rag. I always put a rag down uh, underneath where I'm working because we've got printed concrete drive. And I don't want to make it a mess, like. So, uh, access stand. And the 21 mil double spline socket. So, so I've got 21 mil double spline socket and we crack bar and I'm going to just undo these two bolts.
put me in yesterday and bloody freezing. Should have put a woolly hat on. You should have been asked, So tight. So let's get the ratchet in. Stand with a block on. This is the rest, rest the caliber on because it's bloody heavy. Took a bit, then it's balance. I put the um, axle stand and the block there to rest the caliper in place because I don't want the ha caliper hanging from the brake flexi. The caliper weighs that, uh, it's so heavy, it'll end up perishing the, uh, the brake flexi. So, because we've undone the, the cap head on the disc, the disc is ready to lift off. Oh, I'll just put this safe. So I've just brought the new disc over, so uh, off camera, I'll just clean the hub up, always clean the hub up from brake discs and uh, hard copper slip or anything, so the disc will go on true then. Uh, in my kit, it comes with a new 6mm um, cap head, which holds the disc in place, like a, should we call it a retaining screw. So I'll put the new disc on. So off camera, um, new brake discs, I always uh, spray up with a uh, brake cleaner, both sides. Um, brake discs, when you get them out, out of a packet, brand new, they usually have grease or some sort of oil on to stop them from rusting, you know, when they're in, in, in should we say, storage. So I just spray them. And I don't know if you've noticed, the hub's black. Um, every time I put brake discs on a car, any type of car, that's my own car. Um, after about six months or so, especially when you're using certain wheel acids and wheel cleaners, your hub will rust. The metal will rust. Even though brake discs have some sort of coating on, it will rust and it looks crap. So what I tend to do is um, spray them, give them a quick scotchy with a grey scotchy pad and spray them with uh, like a black high temperature stone chip paint that I've got. Um, awesome stuff it is. And then what I do is just go, go with a little bit of two-pack thinners around the edge in case, you know, like, a case got a bit of spray paint on. But it, it just finishes off, and when you put the wheel on, it, they last much longer, and they don't get that rusty. Well, to be honest, um, I did ask Susie's car when she first bought it, uh, about six years ago, and they have rusted since, you know what I mean? So it looks great, like. So we'll, uh, now that now the disc's on, we'll put the caliper, we'll bolt the caliper back on.
I always start all my bolts by hand, just stops you from cross threading them, doesn't it? So we've got a 21mm double spline socket. Now they're tight with a smaller ratchet. I'm going to tighten them with the bigger ratchet now. Um, these would have a torque set, and but I haven't got a torque wrench this size, so I'm just going to tighten them up to FT. And to me, that's fucking tight, like. Oakley Doakley. So some of you might have noticed that uh, my calipers are painted. Um, I painted these about a year ago. Um, I put a link to the video to show you how I painted them. Uh, painted them with caliper paint, uh, acid etch. I rubbed them down, acid etch, primer, uh, caliper paint that you can buy from Halfords. And then I put a uh, 1K um, lacquer over the top. Uh, and I put, um, like I got these Range Rover stickers off, off eBay put them on and then lacquer over the Range Rover stickers to make them last but uh, yeah, I think it looks smart like so um, we'll put the, put the pads on it so I've got because Euro at the time didn't have um, Brembo pads in at the time I bought for Odo they're, they're not the same sort of quality you know what I mean Massive pads these, look at that. Massive aren't they? Massive calipers to be fair though. East aren't they? I was gonna say it's like nearly a three ton truck in it. So I do, I've stopped using um, copper slip about a year ago. Um, I've started using this stuff. It's like um, a brake grease, but it's actually awesome and it's so tidy, it's so tidy to use. So put a tiny bit, because these are uh, six six pots, there's um three um pistons per pad. So we'll just put a tiny bit of, bit of brake grease where the piston touches the caliper, it touches the paddy. I will we'll just put a tiny little bit of there so they can slide back and forth. Put the back one in first. Slidey, slidey. Jubbly, jubbly. So we'll do the same to the front. Just a light smear. These pads have got these anti-squeal pads. Um, these brake pads have got like anti-squeal pads connected to them, but I'll just put a tiny bit on. Belts and braces, there's no all that was this day. Perfect day. So we'll throw our pins in um, and then we'll throw, throw on. I'll show you the pins in the set. There's our new spring. Shiny bit, shiny, shiny bit. Let's put this one in first. Put our bottom pin in.
Hi mate. Sorry mate. I haven't got any. Thanks anyway. Then I'm just, you know what? You can't do anything nowadays, can you? There's literally people everywhere, isn't it? Look for scrap metal and cars and stuff everywhere, isn't it? So just working on my drive, you know what I mean, and get hassled by people. Um so I put this pin in, so I'm just gonna knock this one in. Our sensor back in. Our sensor is on the front front pad, so we'll put it back on the front pad. That's where it came from, wasn't it? Beautiful. What a lovely job. What do you think? Pretty smart, like, isn't it? A bit of time and effort, you know what I mean? Do all these jobs yourself, really. People are quite scared, aren't they? I'll tell you what, we haven't done. I can tighten that little bolt up. That's because I'm talking to you, that is. There we go, that's tight. Looks sweet, doesn't it? So, right guys, hope that I give you a little insight of um, how to change these. Um, it's not a big job, it's not a hard job. A uh, local garage probably charging me an hour's labour. Um, these these uh, these discs Brembo from Euro uh, are two hundred pound a side, um, but I waited for one of them fifty uh, percent deals. You know where uh, Euro car has uh, as some weekends they have fifty percent deal on, uh, and I, I bought them on the fifty percent deal. So uh, I think they were one hundred and five pound each uh, for the pair, and uh, I've got some Ferrero pads. So um, you've got what well, you've got to consider. They are expensive cars, you know, like the upkeep and stuff. But they were like this, this new, 12 years ago, was nearly £100,000, you know what I mean? £100,000 can buy a house nowadays. So you, you've got to consider the parts and that aren't too bad, considering the car was hundred nearly £100,000 12 years ago. So, And I love it, mate. The only reason I'd change it is probably for a newer Range Rover. Uh, but there's probably maybe 15 20 grand worth of difference between my range rover and a newer range rover and i haven't got that 15 20 pounds worth of difference and i'm not in a position where i'd like to get finance or a loan or something i always buy cars and buy them cash and that's just how i am so anyway guys um if you're new to the channel please subscribe because i'm always doing stuff on range rovers um like i've got my own range Rover. anyway as i was saying um I love it, I absolutely love it, and uh, the 4.4 litre engine, uh, twin turbo diesel, I absolutely love it, it's awesome. Um, I might get it mapped soon, so, uh, only because I've had it over the year and stuff, and it's the next thing to do, isn't it, get it mapped. Uh, two of the wheels could do with a light refit, but I don't see the point of doing that with the missus using it, because she's just going to whack a curb, isn't she, or something, so. Um, anyway, um, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. You take it easy. See you later. Are you rooted? Please like it, subscribe.